Hey there, Grade 8s. Welcome back. Uh, this is going to be Lesson 7. This is actually our final lesson of the chapter, and this is applying Pythagoras' theorem. Um, so just a reminder, Pythagoras' theorem is where we're actually talking about the square of side lengths of triangles, but we have to use what we would consider to be right triangles. So you have to have this little symbol in the corner of your triangle for this theory to work. Um, otherwise, it's it's not going to work out for you. So um, here we've got a couple. I've got a couple examples that I'm going to go through. A couple different ways that you're actually going to be able to see it and how to apply uh, these particular uh, concepts. So here we have our legs. So our legs, just as a reminder, are the two lines that are basically adjacent or touching or closest to our right angle. All right. So we have our right angle right here, and then we've got our two legs, so one of them is 33, we'll say centimeters, and we'll say the other one is 56 centimeters, all right? So we're going to try to figure out what our distance is from corner to corner of this rectangle that we have. So if I'm going back, I'm going to remember that it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is probably going to be one of your easiest formulas to remember, it's just ABCs Square, square, square. Um, so I'm going to take 33 as A. I'm going to take 56 as B. And I just want to clarify, it does not matter which one that you pick to be A and B. It does not one, if you pick one to be A and the other one to be uh, A, it doesn't matter. Okay, like 33 can be A, 56 can be A. You're going to get the same answer because you're squaring both of them and adding them together. There's not going to be an impact. So you don't have to always go the horizontal, uh, or sorry, the vertical one first, and then the horizontal one second. It, it, it has no impact on, on what's going on. All right, so uh, I don't have these squares memorized, so I'm actually going to have to use my calculator. So 33 squared is 1,089 plus, we've got 56, 56 times 56 gives me 3,136, all right? So, um, and that's all going to equal C squared. So when I add these together, uh, plus 1,089, I get 4,225 equals C squared. Now, when I'm looking at it, I know that 42 isn't one of my perfect squares, but that doesn't mean that it's not possible. So... Uh, let's square root it, and I end up getting a wonderful whole number, which is 65 equals C. So that tells me that my length from here to here is 65 centimeters. All right. So that's example number one, where we don't have the hypotenuse. Okay. So I'm going to slide over. Um, now, what happens if we do have the hypotenuse? All right. So in this example. We have the 175, and we also have a 168. So I'm going to rewrite my formula. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to put in what I have. Okay. Um, I'm going to call this one a squared, just because in the last one I put my, my shorter one a squared. And I'm just going to show you that it doesn't matter. So I'm going to say 168 squared plus b squared equals... 175 squared. So, as we can see right now, I am missing my B. And normally, I would have my B, okay? But in this case, I'm missing it. So, I'm going to have to do a little bit of algebra and a little bit of manipulation um, to try to make it work. So, I'm going to square everything. Um, so, 168 uh, times 168 gives me a big number, 28,220. 4 plus b squared equals, and then when I say 175 times 175, it gives me another big number, so 30,625. Now, my goal is to get b by itself. So I'm actually going to take my 20,224, and I'm going to swing it all the way over to the other side. And then it's going to become its opposite operation. So right now it's positive, it's going to come over to the other side. And I'm going to be subtracting 28,224, and I'm going to be doing the same thing on this side, to minus 28,224. Okay, what that does is that eliminates 
this over here. So now all that I have left on this side is b squared equals, and now I subtract this. Okay, so I minus uh, 28,224, and I'm left with 2,401. Now, if I can square root both of these sides, I'm going to get uh, what the height is of this wedge. So B is going to equal 49, okay? So in this example that we have, so we've got like a little wedge here. Um, I knew what I wanted my length to be. I knew that uh, how far I wanted to go, but I didn't know how high it was supposed to be. Um, so I had to use Pythagoras' theorem to, to determine uh, that. And in this situation, once I have um, my, my b squared in the middle, okay, or if it's a squared, it doesn't matter which one I use, once again, um, it, it's not going to affect anything. But what I have to remember is now I have to subtract from my hypotenuse, or the square of my hypotenuse. All right. So um, those are two quick examples of how you're actually going to apply. Uh, you're going to get a lot of questions that are going to be similar to those. Not too many of them are going to be uh, very different. Um, so you're just going to use those uh, and then and, and you should be able to apply uh, previous knowledge that you've learned talking about line segments. So now you can actually just count the sides um, of, of the line segments to, instead of having to draw the squares and all that stuff. So um, make sure that you check your homework. Uh, check the homework tab in the digital classroom. Um, do your homework uh, from Google Classroom. Bring any questions that you might have to the Zoom chat. And uh, good luck.